Polymer guns are currently the best sellers right now. They are generally more affordable, and to be honest, they work just fine. But even if you don't have a plastic phobia, you'll still likely prefer metal guns over these polymer pistols. And that's just all right. I mean, these guns just feel better and shoot better than their polymer counterparts. Hold and fire one, and you'll know I'm not just spouting crap. So, you want to go metal? Hey, this is your boy Ted from Line 45, and today, I'll be introducing you to some of your best options for metal-framed semi-auto pistols this 2024. But first, let me do this quick plug. Hit the like and subscribe button. All those buttons you can see below. I know it feels like a hassle, but those simple clicks mean a lot for my channel. Now let's get back to the good stuff. CZ Shadow 2 I think it's inappropriate to exclude the Shadow 2 if there's a discussion of the best metal-framed pistols. It's a tested and proven gun in competitions and has been one of the most used pistols by marksmen and women all over the world. Among its distinct features are a slide that rides inside its frame and a substantially low bore axis. With these features, the gun isn't just accurate. It's very easy to shoot, too. Now, for its specs. This is a semi-auto steel-framed pistol chambered in 9mm. It weighs 46.5 ounces, which is certainly heavy, and comes with a 4.9-inch barrel. More or less, it is about 8.5 inches long, making it virtually similar to the length of other pistols I included in this video. Its standard capacity is 17 rounds, which is completely reasonable given that it's about 5.75 inches tall and 1.41 inches wide. One thing I noticed is that its grip is a bit thinner than other similarly sized handguns that use double stack mags. It's not difficult to grip thanks to its generous undercut trigger, aggressively textured front strap, ergonomic back strap, and upswept beaver tail. Check the slide, and you will see that its front and rear are adequately serrated. You'll also notice its top part was ribbed and flattened, which helps in reducing glare. Even the fiber front and adjustable rear sights are serrated, and the two are certainly match grade. They acquire targets really well, and returning them to zero isn't difficult due to how flat shooting this gun is. Its dust cover area has a lot of metal on it, and this kind of helps counteract the muzzle flip and, again, lets you return the sights to zero. I don't know if this design is intentional, but whatever it is, it certainly enhances the gun's performance. No firing block is present in the Shadow 2, despite it being a variant of the SP-01 Shadow. The reason for this is quite simple, and that's to enhance its trigger pull. The double-action pull is light despite it being heavy at 8 pounds, while the single-action pull is about 3 to 4 pounds or so. Overall, the reset is tactile and short, and the travel is quite short, so it's not difficult to rapid-fire this pistol. It's accurate and reliable, fitting to its competition-grade reputation. Staccato P The price of the Staccato P is a telltale sign that it's a premium gun. Basically, it's tailored fit for law enforcement officers, as this is a duty-sized pistol that's not only extremely accurate, but also features a great trigger, solid reliability, an exceptional factory trigger, and a flat shooting performance. For starters, the Staccato P is a 9mm, hammer-fired, semi-auto, full-size handgun. But it's a bit shorter than the other guns I included in this video. It's only 8.1 inches long and features a 4.4-inch barrel. But don't think that it's something you can conceal easily since the gun is still burly and hefty. It has a grip width of 1.5 inches, and it's as tall as 5.9 inches, allowing it to hold 17 plus 1 rounds of 9 millimeters. But yeah, that somehow makes it difficult for small-handed users to grip it properly. Its trigger reach isn't short either, so my well-founded advice is that you only pick this if your hands are big enough to wrap its grip. Notably, it has two frame variants. One is a steel frame and weighs about 33 ounces with an empty mag. The other one is the lighter Staccato P that uses an aluminum frame, and if I'm correct, that one should weigh less than 30 ounces. Regardless of which you choose, the polymer exterior of the gun lets you control its recoil comfortably. The texturing on its grip is so aggressive, too. It feels like you are holding a truck's tire or something similar. The slide has serrations on the front and the rear, and it's pretty much designed for more convenient slide manipulations. It's also cut for optics and can accommodate the likes of Trijicon RMR, Leupold Delta Point Pro, and Holosun 507C. 
Meanwhile, much of its controls are identical to what you can find in 1911 pistols, so it's not that difficult to get used to it. In the range, this gun is quite fun to shoot. The only problem with this staccato is that once you start shooting it, you'll never stop until the last box. Its crisp and light trigger adds to its overall ability to hit targets with relative ease. Sig Sauer P320 AXG Legion What do you know? I really didn't expect that the highly venerable P320 would still get an upgrade, but I am glad that it got the Legion treatment it deserves. The P320 is already accurate and reliable, but with this upgrade you will get a lot more. The Sig Sauer P320 AXG Legion is a feature-rich gun, but the ethos of the P320 is still intact. It's reliable, accurate, and offers user-friendly dynamics. It's a 9mm steel-framed semi-auto pistol that includes three steel mags on its package, and each one holds up to 21 rounds. It is virtually the same length as the Staccato P, with its entire body measuring about 8.2 inches long, but is slightly thicker at 1.6 inches. It stands 5.5 inches tall and has an empty weight of 36 ounces. One of the first things I noticed about this pistol is its integral two-port expansion chamber, or compensator, which is on its muzzle. And if I'm correct, this is the very first P320 that has a built-in expansion chamber, which of course helps a lot in keeping its recoil to a minimum. The frame of the gun is crafted from aluminum alloy, and it offers a three-slotted Picatinny rail, which is integral to its dust cover. The AXG on its name stands for Alloy X Series Grip, and it serves as the grip frame of this pistol. This one has a textured backstrap, and the texturing actually replicated what you can see and feel on Hogue G10 grips. There's also a generous beaver tail just on the top of the backstrap, which ensures that you can have a high hold over the pistol for better shooting control and precision. Check the bottom, and you can see its extended magwell, which facilitates quick reloads. Its trigger is far from what any polymer pistols can offer, and is a step above some metal frame guns. I love the X-Series trigger of Legion pistols, and I am so glad that this P320 got it. This trigger is very easy to control, has no over-travel despite minimal take-up, and pretty much breaks consistently at 4.5 pounds. The slide is fascinating, thanks to some little details like the contours here and there. It has angled grooves on the front and rear, is easy to rack, and of course, cut for red dots. As expected, it comes with X-ray 3 day night sights and definitely works in giving its shooters precise aims. Walther PDP Steel Frame Match 5 Inch The Walther PDP Steel Frame Match is one of the biggest surprises we got this 2024. I first saw this on SHOT Show 2024, and it definitely captivated my trigger fingers with its robust engineering and feature-rich design. There's a full-size and compact version for this gun just like its polymer counterpart, but this time, I will be showcasing its full-size model. For its specs, the 5-inch barreled PDP SF measures 8.4 inches long, 5.9 inches tall, and 1.4 inches wide on the slide. It's a high-capacity pistol, as it holds 18 plus 1 rounds on its flush-fit mags and 20 plus 1 rounds for its extended mag. Its package ships with one 18-round mag and two 20-round mag. So when it comes to stopping power, this one isn't lacking at all. Right from the get-go, this metal pistol is competition ready, thanks to its impressive trigger design, low-cut slide with optics-ready configuration, large aluminum magazine well, and highly ergonomic grip. There's a reversible magazine catch, and the slide stops are on either side, which means that the pistol is fully ambidextrous. It's also substantially heavier than its polymer cousin. The weight difference is nearly a pound when fitted with its metal mag, and that naturally tames its recoil and lets you control the gun efficiently while rapid firing. It also helps that it has the dynamic performance trigger, which is an above average striker fired trigger. This aluminum flat face trigger is downright impressive. It has a short take up, and its wall is more defined, which makes it break a lot crisper. So, while it breaks at 4.5 to 5 pounds, it feels a lot lighter than it should be. The slide features one of the most striking serrations there is, which Walter aptly called Super Terrain. The serrations protrude substantially, unlike other serrations, and what they do is allow users to have a more tactile and responsive engagement when operating the slide. 
On the front of the frame, you'll be able to spot a Picatinny rail, five slots to be exact, and these will let you mount accessories as you will. Performance-wise, this pistol is definitely up there. It's accurate, reliable, and very easy to grip and maneuver. It's certainly one of the best metal guns right now for its value. Dan Wesson, DWX. If price is not an issue, then I'm quite keen to recommend the Dan Wesson DWX. Those who shot this pistol will also say that it's terrific and is almost a cheat to use. The thing is over 2,000 bucks, and I'm quite sure not everyone's pocket is up for such a steep sticker price. But what I can assure you is that its cost is pretty much justified. Now, allow me to tell you its specs. This is a hammer-fired pistol, chambered in 9mm, and holds a standard capacity of 19 plus 1 rounds, which is not surprising considering that this gun is close to 6 inches tall. It measures 8.5 inches long, while its match-grade barrel is less than 4.9 inches long. It's a heavy pistol, to be honest. At 45 ounces when unloaded, it really has the heft to tame its recoil. Its frame and slide are made from rugged steel, and the slide has a DLC finish. What you need to know about this gun is that it combines the best features of a 2011 pistol and a CZ-75. Without delving too much into the nitty-gritty details, the DWX inherited the ergonomics of the CZ-75 and the tested and tried K-style trigger of 2011 pistols. Combining the two gave us an extremely shootable platform that rarely misses or fails. It's a competition gun fresh from the box, and it's not difficult to see why. The grip on this pistol is derived from the Shadow 2, which is a good choice in my opinion, especially since many people find the grip of 2011 guns blocky. Basically, the DWX has an ample beaver tail, comfortable palm swells, and a generous undercut trigger guard, and these components will ensure that you can hold the gun naturally and securely. The sights mounted on its slide are more or less better than most factory sight configurations. The rear is from Shadow 2, while the thin fiber front sight is undeniably the one you see on 1911 pistols. These two sights are easy to acquire, and the sight picture they produce is precise. Its trigger is fantastic. In fact, that's just an understatement of how good it is. It is crisp and breaks at around 3 to 3.5 pounds consistently, and its reset is short, tactile, and audible. Everything that you want about a trigger is here. No mushy feeling whatsoever. The fit and finish are great, and the entire thing is made so rugged that it can take a beating. It's extremely accurate, and its reliability is what you expect from a competition gun. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Just press all the buttons. Those little clicks are free, but they help the channel a lot. Stay sharp, stay safe, and remember, it's not just about the shot, it's about mastering the craft. Until next time, lock and load.